It is entirely possible to become very overpowered while playing Fallout 3. Between the Operation Anchorage power armor and some of the unique weapons, you can make Wasteland Survival as easy as taking vegetables from someone on my 600 pound life. But what if you wanted to reach the maximum level of power? Can you beat Fallout 3 with maximum skills? Since I'm a bit mad for trying this kind of a run, I named myself First Name Mad, Last Name Max for maximum skills. For my special stats, I built an average overall character with a maxed intelligence in order to get the most skill points per level up. The game got weird in the first 10 minutes because a trophy unlocked. I honestly still don't know how to explain this one. I killed the Radroach with no remorse, given this playthrough allows all weapons and equipment. I asked Granny for a minigun during the GEC, learned that I would become a marriage counselor, and picked small guns, speech, and melee for my tag skills. Despite wanting Bitch and his mom to get eaten by Radroaches, I saved them, for the XP of course. The vault escape was more violent than normal, and I escaped. After getting skin cancer from looking at the sun for the first time, I leveled up. I'm not going to show every single time I level up, but a specific set of steps should be taken at each level to ensure that you can complete this challenge. The guide I used will be linked in the description. I robbed a young helpless blonde, decided I would do a good karma run, defuse the bomb, and agreed to help Moira on the survival guide. I'm planning to do every possible quest in this playthrough for the XP. At the Super Duper Ultra Mega Mart, I agreed to help an old man fix his robot, but never got around to it. While we clear the market, let me explain a little bit more about this run. The goal is to get each of the 13 skills up to 100 points, and each special stat up to 10. We have to level up in a pretty specific way in order to avoid soft locking the game by having more points than open spots available at a level up. No magazines can be read, and no bobbleheads can be collected until we reach level 30. I collected food and medicine, entered Faragut West Metro Station, fought off an army of ghouls with a 10mm pistol, and made my way to Chevy Chase. Sarah rejected me, just like every other cute blonde in the world, killed some various mutants, and for the first time in one of these challenges, fought off the super mutant behemoth. I agreed to help Three Dog, then put off the quest to go help the outcasts with their mutant and technology problems. I wanted to go ahead and do Operation Anchorage early due to the high-end rewards that come from completing the DLC. After dropping my stuff off in Megaton, I became a possibly non-consenting subject for a clinical research trial on radiation exposure and entered a simulation to fight the coronavirus as it invaded Alaska. Operation Anchorage is effectively a Fallout shooting gallery and is probably the least interesting of all the DLCs in Fallout 3. The first mission is pretty uneventful, but I will show my reaching of the 6th level. Things finally got more interesting when I exploded in a bunker when I took out the three artillery guns to complete the mission. I picked my favorite package, the heavy weapons, speech checked my way to a gauze rifle that fell off the tauntaun, assembled my strike team, and the game crashed for the first time in the run, very early must I say. To begin the second stream, I again ordered the strike team to head to the Chimera Depot. I freed a couple prisoners, used splash damage to kill a guard, and destroyed a less than lethal Chimera tank. With the fuel tanks destroyed, I photobombed the picture that was used to create the Anchorage War Memorial and ordered the squad to the listening post. I watched the pretty plain silhouettes fly over the battlefield and carefully fought my way to the listening post. We fought off some dragoons in the listening post, killed a sniper camping outside, and returned to base for the final push. After some intense trench warfare, I disabled the Kami Pulse Field and convinced the enemy general to commit Arcanicide. I located the rewards vault, eliminated the dissenting outcast to save Protector McGraw, and made my return to Megaton. I continued Moira's quest with a trip to Mineland, scavenged the local buildings, and finished the first chapter of the survival guide. During my quest to hunt mole rats for the second chapter of the guide, I set off some ridiculously elaborate trap in a gas station. I also fought a group of Talon Company mercs pretty early in the game. My mole rat hunt actually brought me straight to Smith Casey's garage, allowing me to forward the main quest a bit. Since I was already at Vault 112, I decided it would be beneficial to go ahead and enter Tranquility Lane. 
To speed things up, I picked the failsafe option, then showed off what happens if you attempt to punch a little girl. In order to meet Dad in Rivet City, I would first need to discover Rivet City. I was also forced to meet Brian along the way. Old Lady Sparkle Muffin generously donated some of her supplies to the good fight. I caught up with my dad while killing some raiders, attacked a super mutant settlement with the help of a caravan guard, discovered Rivet City, and then detoured to finally help Three Doggy Dog. I cleared a bunch of subway tunnels filled with raiders, arrived at the Museum of Technology, stole the radar dish from a former National Treasure 3, which is now finally in development, and placed the dish atop the Judas Cradle that is the Washington Monument. Three Dog gave me an extra reward for fighting the good fight, spoke with Mr. I Feel Special because I have the name of two presidents, and agreed to help Dad with Project Purity. I cleared the Outer Mutants, burned a brute to death, cleared the Purifier Room, and concluded the near four hour long second drunk stream. On this stream, I decided it was time to head off to Mothership Zeta, raiding a random power station on my way to the Beacon. I murdered a helpless Enclave iBot and a Robobrain, and was pulled into the irradiated skies over DC. Inside the spaceship, the aliens did thanks to at least one of my bodily holes that I would rather not talk about again. I agreed to fake a fight with Soma, and for possibly the first time I can remember, Soma died fighting the first two aliens. Great start. I encountered a possibly reused asset of Betty, retrieved my stolen equipment, trusted said 10-year-old with a frag grenade, attempted a bit of stealth, and relied quite a bit more on the gauze rifle to land quick, accurate killing blows. Despite only being level 10, I was forced to fight my first shielded alien pretty early on. These guys epitomize what this DLC is all about, another Fallout-themed first-person shooting gallery, though it has a more interesting setting. It's simply not the most interesting DLC in the world, with minimal story and mostly one-dimensional characters, but I still find it to be fun. I reaffirmed that I was playing on normal difficulty, continued gunning down my opposition with their own weapons, and unfroze a number of ice pops of varying size and age. Our next objective is to destroy three generators in separate parts of the ship. I decided to take on the cryo labs first with Captain America. Nothing really interesting happens until we find Elliot's remaining squad mates. I chose to have them put down peacefully so that Elliot doesn't end up turning hostile over his own poor decisions. The first generator, control station, or whatever it's called was destroyed shortly after. Next up is the hangar, where we will be joined by Calamity John III. Thankfully, since this is not a weapon-specific run, I get to abuse Godzilla's pulsating sex toys around the ship and kill nearly everything before it can even get to me. After sabotaging the second generator, I enter the robot assembly area alone because Soma couldn't fight off two aliens with mild taser sticks. The room of a hundred drones is always particularly unpleasant, but the generator fell just like the first two. After repelling an alien counterattack in the engine core, I donned the spacesuit of no gloves or oxygen, traversed the airlock, journeyed across the outer hull of the ship, and safely made my way back inside. I looked through the window to see what may have been Beijing before the Great War, looted some exceptionally rare items, violated some Brahmin, played Nuclear Winter version 1.0, and fought some of these effing things. The Death Ray Room is another long combat section, with some repetitive generator destruction thrown in, and having a bit of fun with the Death Ray itself. Oh, and I died, possibly for the first time. After fighting off even more of the same generic aliens, I cast Expelliarmus to disarm and dishead the alien captain. The final battle of the DLC attempts to be more of a puzzle than anything, but even my dog could probably figure this one out. Just raise your shield, take a hit from the enemy, drop your shield, fire, and repeat. A few minutes later, the alien mothership exploded, presumably granting advanced alien tech to the other side of the world, and we're already through our second of the five DLCs. Also, I shot the sheriff, because I wanted a new hat. Upon returning to the wasteland, I retrieved a brand new alien blaster and ammo, then began the process of selling all the crap I picked up along the way. When I got tired of that after a solid 10 minutes, I went to Tepid Sewers to kill one or two more mole rats. That was followed immediately by the Mirelurk spawning pod bugging part of the quest. 
I sacrificed myself for a grade school science project on what happens when a human wearing 50 pounds of armor jumps off a balcony. I resorted to the Florida Man method of getting a crippling 50% health injury. This took us to the final chapter of the guide. With my home more decked out than normal, I concluded stream number 3. For the fourth stream, I decided to start out with finding the true history of Rivet City. I forgot to pack my rebreather, killed some angry Mirelurks, met an old hermit crab that told me nothing, caught Binocchio in a lie, agreed to hunt an android all the way from the Commonwealth, and got Pinkerton's help for two whole quests. Moira's quest is nearly over, so I made my way to the old Robco factory. I hacked a terminal in order to bring pleasure to myself and Moira in ways you can't possibly imagine. I overheard a civilized debate at nearby Richie Rich Towers, agreed to help with the little ghoul problem, talked to one of the oldest remaining humans, and began the final step of Moira's questline. I discovered the riverboat landing, took a large and explosive dildo like a champ, and went on a quest for the greatest gift of all, knowledge. I fought some raiders, encountered the rare pitching machine trap, fought more raiders. I never knew raiders were so invested in their local library. I got the library archives, spent a good ten minutes looking for that stupid ink bottle, and finally completed the Wasteland Survival Guide. Back on the main quest, I cleared the rest of the Jefferson Memorial, did the obligatory work for Dad segment, murdered an Enclave with a superior to the Enclave weapon, watched Dad die, and guided the scientists through the tunnel. I made it to the Citadel, found the location of the Gek, killed a Yaogwai with relative ease, and fought an entire encampment of Talon Company. This led me to Fort Bannister, where I continued my mission to wipe Talon Company from the face of the earth using my gauze rifle. Since it's been a while, here are my stats and perks as I hit level 14. I made my way to Little Lamplight, agreed to rescue some kids from slavers, and got to Paradise Falls about 10 minutes later. I decided to complete at least some of Strictly Business, captured a resident of Tenpenny Towers, and gained entrance to Paradise Falls. I talked to the kids, and ended the fourth stream. I began the next stream by liberating some Nuka-Colas of various types and freshness, hacked into a computer, got rid of a guard, save scummed my way to rescuing Penny, picked up a holotape, and successfully saved the kids. The game crashed. I entered Little Lamplight, used Stinky to give me the location of Big Town, he died in his first fight, and recruited the far superior pupper to the team. I made it to Big Town, was generally gifted supplies by raiders that I killed, the Rivet City Railroad members showed up on the wrong side of the map, and a battle began at the police station. I rescued Red, chose to reprogram the local pleasure bots for business purposes, defended Big Town, provided expert medical care, and then sold the town doctor into a life of slavery. I learned more about the android, gave Harkness his plot twist, and used his sexy plasma rifle to turn ghouls into melted pistachio ice cream. I dealt with the ghoul problem the same way you deal with any other infection, by shooting it with something. I got a decent reward, participated in the hunt, featuring mole rats, mutated scorpions, mutated bears, and humans that were also possibly mutated. I saved Warner, had a rare random encounter with Wastelanders trying to plunder Oasis, stole a slave outfit, dropped stuff off in Megaton, and left for the pit. I got my concealed carry, both in-game and in real life, crossed the bridge in a surprisingly cautious fashion for myself, had my booty plundered and enslaved, and met Medea. I located at least one of the secret stashes, and began the process of looting the steelyard, you only need 10 ingots to finish this objective, thankfully, but I died on the way back without having saved. I used up about 72% of my healing supplies fighting a single trog brute, returned the ingots, and won all three arena fights with relative ease. I got all my stuff back, baby napped a baby that was napping, and joined Amon's Rebellion. After killing dozens of raiders and over four hours of gameplay, I was ready to pass out from the bourbon and ended the stream. Keep in mind that this was my second longest stream of all time. I returned a week later to kill more raiders, gave Warner the baby, collected extra ingots for some reason, wiped out a large family of trogs, 
and turned off the power. I had far more trouble trying to figure out how to carry Asher's armor out of the DLC than I did actually killing Asher. I killed another family of Trogs and its entire extended family, resorted to carrying Asher's armor in this way, and the slaves won the war. My reward? An ammo press. Yay. I immediately got addicted to buff out when I returned to the wasteland, did some trading, and started some quests in the underworld. I struggled with my exact knowledge of parts of American history, but received drugs as a prize when I eventually answered correctly, and teamed up with Sydney. Many robots fell. I passed a speech check on the first attempt, and returned alone to our new president, Abraham Washington. I swear Sydney didn't die at my hand this time. I stole a key from Ted, hardscope Tenpenny, stupidly bought Dukov's key, and got another key as a gift from the Democratic Republic of the Dave. I failed to convince Crowley that I had killed Dave, ironically killed the zombie with a headshot, and got all the keys back. I went to Greyditch to kill ants, informed Brian that his parents had abandoned him, and soon ended another stream. The seventh stream began with getting fire ants in our pants by continuing our quest to kill a bunch of giant ants. I made that rhyme. I made my way to a metro station, shot many more ants, and agreed to help the author of a 400-page book about ants that our high school biology teacher made us read. I couldn't find the name of it. I made Dogmeat kill most of the fire ant guardians, received an injection with unknown contents, agreed to find Brian a new home, and got him adopted in Rivet City. Here are my level 18 stats and perk choice, because it's been a couple ranks. My next stop was Oasis, during which time I got my first ever YouTube stream donation, which was awesome. Unfortunately, my joy was short-lived, as something very weird happened. The person outside the gate got killed by a random Enclave soldier, but this somehow made Oasis hate me instead of the Enclave, and I no longer had any way to access Oasis or do the Oasis quest. I have no idea why this happened. It's never happened to me before, and hasn't happened to me since. So, I murdered all the Enclave in response. Unfortunately, it didn't change their mind. Upon fast traveling to the scrapyard, I got caught in the crossfire between a Deathclaw and Talon Company, ending in another death. I fought a roaming sentry bot, discovered Canterbury Commons, and agreed to end the fight between Ant-Man and Iron Man over who has the biggest followers and the smallest dicks. I continued my genocidal rampage against the mutated ants, executed their leader, who is not an ant, and finished another quest. I decided that my next stop would be the Swamps of Point Lookout, where Midden Squad made a far better joke about the color green than I ever could have. Upon reaching the mansion, I was tasked with playing a round of Nazi zombies, but instead of zombies, we fight off a cult, just as violent as all the others in the Fallout franchise. I used a shotgun shell to plug a hole, plugged a second hole, this time with a bullet, and continued to fight through the enemy onslaught. Desmond thanked me for saving his home and his life, I then made plans to repent for all my nights of drunk streams by going to a church, and then the game crashed because reasons. To begin stream number 8, I fought some locals, who seemed to be the product of the University of Alabama students and their brothers and sisters. I shot some Mirelurks, indulged in the local brand of drug, and went on a trip. If anyone watching this video does drugs, let me know what this effect is actually the closest to. I'm legitimately curious. The church accepted me. I took their communal supplies, fast traveled into an explosion, informed Desmond of everything that had happened, and fought a painfully obnoxious and overpowered feral ghoul reaver. I entered the sea cave, fought a swamp lurk, talked to Pinky not the brain, or it was the brain, technically, did something to the ferris wheel, and was ambushed by an army of cousins. After wiping out an entire extended family, someone pushed a red button, and I looted Desmond's panic room. Desmond and I joined forces to end the 200-year-long game of Family Feud. We executed a brain that might have still been alive in some way, double or triple crossed Desmond, I lost track by this point, and earned a few rewards. I started a side quest from a local hotel room, robbed a bank, got attacked by a gang of smugglers, killed some robots, looted a makeshift armory, and located some ancient self-destruct codes from a crematorium. I went swimming in the waters of Flint, Michigan, destroyed a submarine, 
The game crashed again. I then went toilet fishing, killed another group of smugglers, and solved a puzzle. If you could call it that, it always has the same solution. Despite being double-crossed, I got a sweet new rifle and managed to escape an irradiated trap. I headed to Marguerite's shack to begin making some real moonshine, then went and killed some surviving tribals. I gave Marguerite the remaining ingredients, fought way too many more inbreds, and got some free samples of my hard work. Next up, I harassed an old man to give me another quest, started another quest about soil or something, collected the first survey recording, and a second, killed a bunch more ghouls, and got a final sample. I turned in the codes for a small reward, started the human hunting portion of the Purge 2, did the quest a lot faster than I expected, and, yet again, the game crashed. And that was it for stream 8. Here comes stream number 9, starting immediately with another game crash. This is going so well, everyone. I stumbled across the home of a merchant I barely remember, stole a book that has probably now been part of a creepypasta, died fighting another group of inbreds, had more success with the Chinese assault rifle than the flamer, and got a small loan of a thousand bottle caps as a reward that I never paid back. I repeatedly failed to get Tobar to donate a ticket to the NCS Fan 001 Foundation, but nonetheless finally returned to the Capital Wasteland with Point Lookout completed. I organized my gear in Megaton, got Paladin Cross to follow me, killed some super mutants, and reached the Statesman Hotel. The game crashed once again as I fought a centaur. I had to kill the outside mutants again, use the minigun that Granny gave me during the goat, and crossed over to the ranger building. I found the ranger's ammo cache, repaired the elevator for later use, looted more stuff, and Paladin Cross died while I looted alcohol and plastic plates. I ran away from an overlord, since they have a stupid amount of health. Played grenade tag with him. I met the rangers on the roof, gave their mechanic an early Christmas present, and we successfully made our escape. I got past some traps to meet a scavenger, encountered this disturbing little trap that is in a baby carriage, got lost in downtown DC for literally half an hour, faced the field of explosive cars, and finally made my way to the ranger headquarters. I got a nice Eugene for a reward, agreed to find an old violin for an equally old lady, committed the sin of robbery from the church, received execution by death claw, and was sent back to before my terrible sins. Don't worry guys, I did the same thing again, because why wouldn't I? I began the quest Blood Ties, chose to once again try to atone for my sins by starting Head of State, and promised to bring Sierra 30 glowing sex toys for safekeeping, presumably in her rectum. The tenth stream began with an attack from numerous wild doggos, but no crash. That's an improvement. I then launched an assault on the Lincoln Memorial, actively used some cover in this RPG, and killed Leroy Jenkins! I don't know why I did it in that voice, that makes no sense. I fought some ghouls in the Museum of History, left the bathroom after having explosive diarrhea, took a wanted poster, the memorial poster, and got killed by a reaver. After getting those items again, I picked up an ancient voice recording, a draft poster, a coin collection, and most importantly of all, Lincoln's repeater. I returned to the Temple of the Union to forward the quest, waited a full day for Hannibal to arrive, scammed him on the sale of generally useless old historical artifacts, and reached level 22. Since it's been about four levels, I think I will show off level 22's perks and skill points. I felt personally insulted by a group of Brotherhood outcasts, though I chose to let them live. Scavenged Greener Pastor's disposal site, killed an Enclave patrol, encountered a random shotgun-toting wastelander, and reached Vault 92. I shot some bugs, fought a smorgasbord of various Mirelurk meats, disarmed some traps, utilized Lincoln's 400-year-old rifle, and finally located the Soil Stradivarius. Is that how it's pronounced? I hope so. I looted the overseer's office, gave Agatha the violin, and since I already had some sheet music paper from before, I don't know when I got it, gave that up as well for the Blackhawk 44 Magnum Condom. Knowing that I would end up needing a lot more XP and wanting to get strictly business off of my quest list, 
I decided that I would implement the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments by killing all the slavers of Paradise Falls. The fight wasn't really difficult given my high level and superior equipment, but I unfortunately had to cut this stream short in order to make it to a boosting session. I'm assuming it was either The Last of Us or Uncharted 2, but I don't remember exactly what I was grinding at the time. The 11th stream began with me beheading a fleeing slaver. I happily killed Yule G. Jones, freed some other adult slaves, and officially got to work on the quest Blood Ties. I was told to find the family. I bought some cigarettes while underage, because the age is now 21 in the United States for some reason, fought another Talon Company hit squad, and learned that sugar bombs can be used to make drugs. Good to know. Deeper in the metro system, I traded with a vamp kid, learned I would need to tickle the terminal with a passcode, made a Karen give it to me by promising to take her to the manager once she did, and got Ian to leave peacefully. Not usually the solution I go after. With yet another side quest out of the way, I killed a Yao Guai with a minigun and entered Hamilton's hideaway. I got some medical supplies, then came face to face with the albino rad scorpion. Not only are they fairly creepy, but they have an absolute colossal amount of health. Killing the scorpion thankfully provided just enough XP to hit level 23. The weapons cache was somewhat underwhelming, though I did pick up a couple weapons, some ammo, healing items, and a skill book. Nearly out of quests, I decided it was finally time to go loot Fort Constantine. I cautiously picked up caps around the bobblehead, fought an army of robot defenders, used Crowley's keys on all the doors, and secured one of the best suits of power armor in the entire game. With 25 Nuka-Cola Quantums to my name, I set off to find the fabled Nuka-Cola Treasure Trove truck in the northeast corner of the map. I apparently placed the marker quite well, since I found the truck a lot faster than I had initially expected. I decided it would be funny to finish the quest by giving the Quantums to Ronald instead of Sierra, but when you flirt worse than I do, even the world's largest collection of irradiated soda will not be enough to please your lover. So because of this, I reloaded a save to give the Quantum to Sierra and get the extra nuke grenade schematics. I killed Ron for the crime of being creepier than a politician around women, learned about Mississippi Quantum Pie, which is actually in my Fallout cookbook, and returned to Megaton once again. So at this point, I was out of new quests to do, and still nearly six levels short of where I wanted to be before entering Vault 87. I was pretty much left with two options. I could either explore the wasteland for countless hours, discovering locations and killing enemies, or utilized what I believed, at least at the time, to be the easiest method of fast XP farming that I could find. My method of XP grinding was shown a bit in part 12, which was a video instead of a stream. Basically, you repeatedly will want to place a mine in Moira's shop and immediately defuse it for just a few XP. I don't know if this actually is the most efficient method of XP farming, as it still took probably like 5 hours or more. And it's also very easy to mess up, so you have to save really, really often to do it properly. And this section will probably have been sped up. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. But by the end of this little segment, you will have seen me hit level 28, and you will see that all of my stats were at 85, 86, or 87, with the exception of energy weapons, which is still a little bit lower. Finally, midway through level 28, I was able to jump back into the main story, knowing that I would hit level 30 before the highly missable Raven Rock bobblehead. To begin the final stream, I convinced the obnoxious Kid Mayor to let me into Murder Pass, fought through a full-blown army of super mutants, and entered Vault 87. There are a metric f ton of super mutants here, including the ever-pleasant super mutant overlords, whom I eventually resorted to fighting with their own weapons, the Tribeam Laser Rifle. Four overlords later, I reached level 29, and almost immediately after, level 30. This got every skill to 89 or 90. Then, I took Almost Perfect as my perk and got all special stats to 9. I brute force hacked Fox out of his cell, killed yet another super mutant overlord, killed two or three more overlords on the way to the Gek, and Fox gave me a present that I could not turn down. The Enclave knocked me out. I told Autumn to shove a COVID-infected knife in his urethra. He played a, a reverse Uno card on me by turning all of the Enclave against me, despite the president's orders, and I ended up killing the Rivet City traitor. 
I finally picked up my first bobblehead, the highly missable energy weapons bobblehead in Autumn's room. Now let me say something about this real quick. I was under the impression that this bobblehead was one of the seven for special skills, meaning I would have needed to be level 30 before picking it up in order to get all my special stats to 10. Looking back on it, I actually probably could have done this quest and picked up the bobblehead earlier, which would have saved a lot of time from grinding. Learn from my mistakes, children. I convinced the president to blow up Raven Rock, got a cute little Deathclaw as a pet, reunited with Fox to have him join me, and began the arduous process of collecting a number of bobbleheads. Oh, and Sims apparently didn't care that I broke into his house to steal the strength bobblehead. Next was Perception, conveniently located at the Republic of Dave that I had already discovered. Agility was next on the list, in some kind of building near Greener Pastures Disposal Site. Again, not too tough. Endurance was found in a cave filled with death claws, possibly the death claw sanctuary. That one was a bit tougher. Intelligence was very easy to find, having been sitting in Rivet City for an unknown number of years. Another bobblehead would soon be found in Vault 108, which is populated exclusively by Gary, who is very different from Larry, who is also very different from Jerry. The bobblehead was charisma, by the way. Last but not least, the luck bobblehead was found in the basement of the Arlington House, the one house apparently still standing in all of Arlington. With all special stats at 10 and most skills at level 100, I began to peruse my collection of random skill books collected throughout the journey. Also, for completion's sake and for the medicine bobblehead, I decided to do trouble on the home front. I killed a vault security guard, got the medicine bobblehead, taught the overseer about the dangers of inbreeding, and was rewarded by being kicked out of the vault for good. With only repair below 100 and no books to raise the skill, I made the quick round trip to Arafu for the bobblehead. Max stats and skills achieved. I headed for the citadel to begin the final battle, but Daddy Todd Howard had other plans. The game softlocked me in the Citadel to where I could not actually start the final quest or speak with Sarah Lyons. Thank you, Todd Howard, for doing it once again. Naturally, my last save was all the way back before I started trouble on the home front. This time, I executed Officer Gomez for no reason, took the bobblehead again, rushed through the quest with the exact same results as before, and eventually got my skills back up to level 100. Thankfully, the game properly worked this time in the Citadel, though Sarah's reward was a bit more PG than PG-13, if you know what I mean. I joined Liberty Prime in the launching of the fattest of men, and, of course, the game crashed one final time because life isn't already bad enough as it is currently in the world. I utilized my excessive ordinance to thin out the Enclave. Shepard doesn't care about danger close. Autumn was executed for not following social distancing guidelines. I sacrificed myself to save the rest of humanity, and I beat Fallout 3 with maximum skills. This run was an interesting one. It wasn't really what I would consider to be difficult, because you have access to all the weapons and the super strong armor, but the process is just really tedious since the leveling has to be done in a fairly specific way. Also, the larger your save file, the more often the game crashes, and that gets very painful when you're dealing with this for over 40 hours, because yes, this run took more than 40 hours over the course of 12 streams and a compilation video of leveling up a bunch of times. But ultimately, this was a really fun challenge. It was great to play through Fallout 3 again. It's something I've never done before, and I would really encourage all of you guys to try it out for yourselves. Thank you for watching, and I will see you back here for another challenge video sometime soon.